Hi, this is Declan Chalvey, uh, artist, former artist of Moon Knight, and you're listening to Into the Night, the Moon Knight podcast. Yes, welcome back, loony listeners. You are listening to Into the Night, the Moon Knight podcast. This is episode 221, and you are with your high press of you, Ray G'day. And this is a feedback episode, uh, much to do with the recent release of Moon, Nine, Moon Knight 1 uh, by Jed McKay and Alessandro Capuccio. Uh, this should be fun. This is off the back of our reaction episode in the previous um 220, which you probably, maybe, hopefully would have heard uh, just a couple of days ago, uh, and I just gave it a couple of days to, to get some feedback in from you, the loony listeners, uh, so I could go through it and, and share your thoughts as well and, and see how you reacted to this first issue. Uh, before any of that, I'd like to thank our gracious Protrunis, uh, listed as co-producers and executive producers on each of the episodes. You can see their names in the show notes. Uh, thank you so much, Petrunis, for helping and supporting. Really does help the show. Um, and, you know, it, it allows me to actually do episodes like this uh, to try to get episodes out tw- uh, twice a week, which is really cool. I mean, I just love doing this, and uh, your help is very much appreciated. So I want to uh, give a big shout-out to the likes of Daniel, Justin, Derek, Kyle, Wayne, Jordan, Josh, James, Russell, and Anthony. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, also, as well, our uh, one of our Petrunis, uh, Daniel, uh, he is... Uh, also a creator as well and he has his comic book character fringe night out and about and available more details towards the end of the show it's it's an original indie comic book based on eerie pennsylvania's very own mysterious superhero definitely worth checking out and finally our two other sponsors hello headphones empowering gamers to play at their best and dreamland comics the superhero superstore now, listeners, we're going to jump right into it. Thanks, one and all, um, and I hope everyone that is listening and and all the Moon Knight fans out there have read issue one by Jed McKay and Alessandro Capuccio. It is really uh, was really a fun ride. Um, again, all my thoughts and Rebecca's, the other high priest, uh, can be heard in episode two twenty, just before this one. But I want to jump into, uh, we, we got some feedback on our social media as well as a couple of audio bits of feedback. So they're always fun to hear. Um, I haven't heard them yet myself. So, uh, I'll be listening along, uh, you know, as I make this recording. Uh, so first off, uh, from the Facebook page, uh, we, I got something here from Blake Buxton. So, Blake mentions, uh, nothing crazy for a first issue, but it was very thorough in its setup of the overall premise and what will be the first arc. I was surprised to see such a thorough reveal of Hunter's Moon and his reasons for going up against Moon Knight. Uh, thank you, Blake. Yeah, it was a very thorough setup. I think it was very well done, very well balanced. It had a bit of everything. Uh, and, and as well, I was surprised at this reveal of Hunter's Moon too. It, it came really early, uh, uh, you know, the end of issue one, I don't think anyone expected it. We were expecting issue three because he's on the front cover, uh, and that was enough to get everyone quite excited. But I think maybe that was the sleight of hand. Maybe uh, it could have been an indirect thing, but uh, by showing him on the front cover of issue three, I think everyone was blindsided by the fact that he would actually turn up in issue one. And uh, and I like it actually... Uh, Blake, I think it is a surprise, uh, but similar to say how I thought Jason Aaron functioned with the Age of Conchu, uh, I think you kind of get it out of the way, you set it up, get it out of the way, and then now it's established, now he can tell the story. And I think it was really good to have uh, Hunter's Moon, his origin, origin is kind of um, a little bit leaked here as well, just to the fact that um, we know he's the left fist of Conchu, we know... You know, we know a bit more about him now. Like he's a Conchu devout follower, and uh, and he runs a mission as well, similar to Mark. Um, we see him beating up an eight ball for trying to steal some drugs. Uh, so we know a bit about him already. 
Uh, and uh, of course we can learn more, but it, it certainly was a surprise. I wonder, Blake, if you found that a pleasant surprise or, or otherwise, um, but it's a good point that you raised, and um, and let's just see. You know, he wants to correct Mark. He wants to correct Moon Knight. Let's, let's see how that um, unfolds. But thank you for that. Uh, next, we go onto our Facebook page, and this is where a uh, Facebook, sorry, group, and this is where, where we get uh, most of our feedback. So I want to um, kick off here with with a Petruni, Jordan, Jordan Hegarty. Hi, Jordan. Big shout out to you, and thank you again. Thank you so much for being a Petruni. And Jordan says issue one did a good job of simple recap but also had plenty of action, fun little moments, and set up for the future of our protagonist, as well as two antagonists. Very well executed. I'm loving the art too. Uh, yeah, thank you, Jordan. I think basically you you summarised what Rebecca and I had said um, to a T. It was, there was a very simple recap, you know, to help out for any new fans, but it had plenty of action in between, so it kept the pace going. It had fun little moments, and it set up future, uh, like it had twists and stuff that set up for future stories, um, and will have us guessing as well. And it gave us not one, but two antagonists. So, whew, you know, Jed, he did have those 10 extra pages, but it, did he fill them up or what? Um Fantastic and and agree totally very well executed, loving the art. I mean, I I mentioned my thoughts on the art as well, um, back in the the episode with Rebecca, uh, but yeah, I mean it was it was very good, very good to look at. Uh, so thank you very much there, Jordan. And uh, next we have another uh, another semi regular loony that comes on the show and and has participated in stuff like our ITK serial adventure. Don't worry, I haven't forgotten about it. It is coming towards the end of July, the next episode. Um, but this is Corey Hardiman. And Corey writes in and says, I always have high expectations for new Moon Knight runs, and so often they fall short, sometimes really, really short. This time they succeeded, they exceeded all my expectations. This is the Moon Knight I want to read. I couldn't be happier. Speaking to my own personal tastes, this is the best number one since the Houston Finch run. I literally do not have a single complaint, except that I have to wait for the next issue and I want it now. And seeing that Tiger is coming back in issue four, Moon Knight is in capable hands and I am ecstatic about it. Thank you so much, Corey. I mean, um, I do know, like, and I mean this obviously in a very positive way, as you say at the beginning, like you do hold high standards for Moon Knight and um, for you to give accolades to this series, you know, that just makes me so happy as well. I'm glad that you're happy. Um, it really does show that, that Jed has, for all intents, you know, he's hit it out of the park here. He's, um, he's really, uh, for what I think, because I, I, I know Corey and, and I know he, as I said, like he, he really, um, does scrutinize um, how Moon Knight is handled, uh, you know, as, as many Moon Knight fans do. Um, but to have Corey say those words, uh, it's very heartening. So, um, fantastic. Thanks, Corey. Also, you mentioned the Houston Finch run. Issue one, that was a fantastic one. It's very memorable. Look, it ushered Moon Knight into the modern era. Um, I tend to think, though, as well, that the Bemis run, 188, was very strong on its own merits. It was very different um, to Jed's run and the Houston run. But um, for those that you that may recall, it didn't have Moon Knight in it at all, which was a very bold move. Uh, it, it kind of laid the floor out of for Egyptian mythology and and Konshu as well. It was it's introducing Amun Ra, the Sun King. Then it turned to almost this horror with uh, with the Sun King and Doctor Emmett towards the end, and you had that glorious art by Jason Burroughs all throughout, and in particular towards the end. Uh, when Dr. Emmett meets her demise. Uh, I just remember that was a very unforgettable first issue, a very strong way to start off a series. Uh, and, and at the same token as well, the Lemire run. I think the Lemire run, the, that first issue was quite strong as well in setting the tone for what we got in those subsequent 13 issues. So, um, but I can't fault you there, Corey. I mean, the Houston Finch run definitely, definitely a strong contender as a strong number one. So, uh, we're, we're just blessed with, a lot of good number ones, um, us loonies. Uh, but a big thank you, Corey. 
Uh, next we have Blake Buxton again. Uh, he leaves some comments in the group. I'm happy with the story as a setup for future issues, but how are his identities so well known by everyone? He's a real man of the people now, I guess. Disappointed with the art, very two-dimensional. He's more deserving of artwork like the cover. Uh, Hunter's Moon should be quite an adversary in the running for Conchie's favour and Mark's place as the fist. Just an appetite wetter. Won't really know how I feel until several issues in. Uh, yes, thank you, Blake, for those additional comments. Um, yeah, with the, regards to his identity, I did respond to you in the fact that um, I recall, and I could be wrong, but back in uh, Marvel Knights, as far back as that at least, uh, we get... Um, we, we get the other superheroes knowing. They know who Mark Spectre Moon Knight is anyway. And that was like Daredevil, Black Widow, Spider-Man and Punisher. So at least in the superhero community. Oh, and actually, if I'm to go even further, issue one still or issue two of the Mensch run, uh, Moon Knight reveals his identities to his close uh, friends. So Marlene, Jenna, uh, Ray and Rick uh, all know and Crawley are all privy to his secret identity. So as far back as 1980, he's revealed his identity. It's not like he's decided to keep it a secret as close as, say, Daredevil or Spider-Man. So, uh, but, you know, I, I understand where you're coming from as well. The modern era um, identities are, you know, ever since the MCU and all that, everyone doesn't seem to be bothered too much with secret identities. Um, perhaps that's, that's a case as well. Uh, with your comments about the artwork, look again, uh, refer to my comments in, in episode 220. Um, I enjoyed for the most part it. I, I had a little bit of quibbles with the backdrops and the backgrounds. Uh, some of them were really good, like those splash pages with Moon Knight flying, um, speaking to Reese through the cowl microphone. City backdrop was brilliant. Uh, also when he's chainsawing those zombies, the back, again, the backgrounds are great. But there were just some others which I thought maybe was a, a choice of perspective, you know, or camera view. Um, but it did make like the city quite bare and sparse and, and almost clinical. Uh, maybe just too much space around. Um, I feel like if you're going to zoom out and you're going to do those establishing shots, you really have to fill in that panel. Otherwise, it just becomes really quite bare. So anyway, that's a very small quibble um, because I think Moon Knight looks phenomenal in this. Uh, Capuccio does great work to to make him look almost spectral. Um, so I do appreciate that. But I do understand what you mean, I guess, by the, the two-dimensional. Um, and having deserving, he more deserving of the artwork like the cover. Well, I mean, again, that's down to taste as well, Blake. Uh, not everyone, you know, would like and likes McNiven's art. I know at least, you know, a couple of people that aren't big fans, uh, similar to the likes of, say, Finchard. I mean, so uh, it really depends on what you, what your cup of tea is. Uh, but again, yeah, um, your your comments, uh, exactly your taste. So uh, um, if you want to, I'd love to, you know, Old Man Logan, that was all McNiven. That was pretty cool. Uh, and I can see that work with Moon Knight too. Uh, Hunter's Moon, for sure. Uh, a really, uh, a really exciting character. We'll have to just see what what comes of him. Uh, but yeah, um, they say usually give it about three issues to see how how you feel about the run. Um, I'm kind of already sold on issue one, but yeah, for sure. Let let's uh, let's wait until at least issue three or four to see how things are rolling. But thanks thanks again, Blake. Uh, next we have again a no famil no <laughs> someone who is not unfamiliar <laughs> double negative sorry someone that who is familiar with the show uh, a co-host a host uh, he features in the ITK audio serial it's Josh Geronimo! Johnson and Josh Josh says uh, really dug this first issue like most it's a setup issue but has a lot of intrigue I really liked all the throwback references and appearances. The chainsaw scene from issue 23, I think, of Mark Spector series, and its awful finale in issue 60. The previous Doctor turned villain in the 2014 run, Vermin, and I absolutely laughed my ass off when I saw 8-Ball of all people show up here. I'm not sure who the villain in the purple, orange and green is that Mark threw off the roof. Uh, I also like how Mooney has his little mission set up in a way, it makes sense if you tie it to the 2014 run when he was just driving around looking for stuff to do. I feel this idea could retroactively fit in going back and reading those 
uh, where he was contacted in his mission first before going out and doing some work. It's also funny here how he wears his business suit when consulting his clients, but puts on the actual Moon Knight suit when working. Speaking of the suit, I think it's awesome. Crescent moons everywhere, including the shoulder pads, and most importantly, the Cestus is back, baby. I'm with you, Josh. Only a few nitpicks from me. Uh, we have to have another Doctor character. I guess it makes sense, but it seems a little overused at this point. And that other Doctor, Badder, totally put Mark right in, uh, totally put Mark right in front of a shitty supervillain by using his name. I know he's a villain himself now, but that made me laugh when I read it. Other than that, a great first issue. Can't wait to see where it goes from here. Uh, yes, thank you, Josh, uh, for those comments. There's actually a lot to unpack here. Um, I, I love the thoughts. Uh, some things that uh, Rebecca and I have overlooked, um, but, you know, are, are definitely worth raising. So I'm just going to go through this slowly. Uh, yeah, you mentioned the chainsaw scene from issue 23. I think there were a couple of issues in Mark Spector Moon Knight where he goes up against this almost Texas chainsaw massacre kind of guy. Um, I, I thought that chainsaw scene in issue one was just Moon Knight with the chainsaw decapitating zombies. I could be wrong, but I thought that was just one of the, um, one of the, the missions that he was on. Uh, but it, it could well be a subtle nod to the chainsaw in Mark Spector Moon Knight, which is another reference, uh, which is great to see. Uh, yeah, you mentioned about issue 60, which we called out as well. That was with, uh, Mr. Knight talking about the Shadow Keep and Spectacle being blown up and Mark Spector dying. Uh, the previous Doctor turned villain in 2014, Dr. Elsa Warsame. Uh, yes, that was called out as well. Vermin, uh, yep, uh, and we see him in the guys. I mean, last I saw him was in The Amazing Spider-Man, and, uh, and yeah, these, these crazy Z-grade villains, 8-ball. Um, the guy that you mentioned, purple, orange, and green, I had to look him up myself. It's Oddball. He's the guy. He's the guy with the balls. He's a, he's, a, he's a, apparently a very good juggler, and he can do stuff with with it. So, um, funnily enough, um, Eight Ball and Odd Ball are apparently good mates. They hang out at the bar with no name. They play pool together, apparently. And coincidentally, though, on the Wiki, they're both dead. So Jed has resurrected them, only to incarcerate one and to kill one off yet again. Uh, just looking again through here, uh, yeah, this is another thing I thought it was a really cool idea from you, Josh, um, how Moon Knight has set up his mission and how you can actually tie it and retroactively um, fit it into that run because we do see Mr. Knight as a consultant or in his therapy sessions at least in the Mr. Knight suit and Moon Knight doing all the heavy lifting in his Moon Knight, you know, cowl and cape. Uh, that totally works for the 2014 run. They did it. I wonder again if that is a set, a subtle reference from Jed to that 2014 run, because he does use that kind of modus operandi in issue one for Moon Knight. So that's a great pickup, I think, as well. Uh, with the suit, it's a bit more of a, an, an amped up Declan Shalvey suit by Capuccio. I love their shoulder pads because they look like they're the big crescent darts, which you, you get in the action figures, and I've never really seen Moon Knight use in the comics. Uh, I hope he does here. I'm, I'm hoping maybe those shoulder pads are detachable. And the Cestus, of course. Yeah, I love those spiked knuckles. Um, long overdue, so really good to see as well. Um, so your your nitpicks, um, a little a little different here. Um having to have another Doctor character, I totally understand. I mean, they have been used, phew, at least the last two runs as well with Dr. Emmett and um, and Dr. Eliza Warsame. But I feel uh, if uh, if Jed uses Dr. Sturman differently, then hopefully we'll get a point of difference. I mean, so Mark hasn't been treated well with his previous Doctors. Hopefully with Dr. Sturman, she just remains just that, a psychologist, and doesn't become evil or, or bigger or badder than she seems to be. Um, for me, that will be good, uh, because, that again, that will be different from those other Doctors. And let's just have her as a foil uh, in those sessions to Mr. Knight. Um, yeah. And finally, yeah, I think you make that similar point to uh, to Blake about the identity reveal. So, yeah, uh, Dr. Badder calls it out. He calls Moon Knight Mr. Spectre right in front of 8-Ball. Hopefully 8-Ball is just too frazzled 
and worried about getting his face cut off. <laughs> I don't know. But, yeah, uh, I think Rebecca and I mentioned it as well. Maybe Dr. Batter, being a cult of Conchu, maybe they all have a memo about about the Fist of Conchu and know who he is. Uh, maybe it was a slip of his tongue or maybe he intended that as well because we do know, as you say, he is an antagonist. Maybe he wants to really just kind of destroy or ruin Moon Knight. Uh, so there could have been like a subtle way to like, you know, leak that out to the, to the supervillain community. Um, but no, thank you so much, Josh. That was really cool, uh, feedback. I really love that. Uh, plenty to think about and glad to, to hear that you're really enjoying the issue. Uh, next up we have Jeremy Green. Now, Jeremy, um, I was, uh, I was hassling Jeremy. Uh, he, he, uh, posted something saying he's, He's almost there to get his, uh, his copy of issue one. I said, Oh, it'd be great, Jeremy, if you could leave us some, some feedback. So thank you so much, Jeremy, for doing so. And Jeremy writes, uh, that was badass. I love the art and story, and I think I'm going to like this new rival. I'm curious if he has ever had any interactions with Konshu or has any connections at all, or, uh, or if he's just a fanatic or zealot. I like the outfit though, black to Mark's white and a full moon to Mark's quarter moon. Very interesting choices, I think. Yeah, thank you, Jeremy. Um, it, they are, uh, he seems to be kind of like, almost like a polar opposite. He's the left fist to the right fist. Um, Rebecca did note that Mark may have a new moon. If you look under the chest plate, there is a, a black circle under there. Uh, so that again could be the complete opposite to, to, uh, Hunter's moon's full moon on his forehead. Um, and as for what he is, look, it's all up to assumptions now, uh, until we get more. I reckon he is, well, I, I don't know. I reckon he might be appointed by Conchu, but then if you think about it, all those times that Conchu was dogging Mark to actually do a better job um, and threatening to replace Mark, I reckon he wouldn't have done that if he had a left fist to Conchu doing the work as well, unless Conchu wants both fists kind of, you know, working well. But uh, I don't know, something tells me that he is kind of linked to um, to Conchu. I might be wrong. He, he could be totally in his own world, so to speak, and thinks he is connected to Conchu um, and has no connection with him whatsoever. Uh, but I guess we'll just have to wait and see. So very interesting. Uh, again, a good idea that you raise there, Jeremy. And lastly, we have uh, Rick, the Rick Ball special. He chimes in on the Facebook group. And he said, oh, lordy, Marvel's new Moon Knight series is what Gen Y would call straight up bussin. Well, I'm, I'm Gen X, so I'm, I'm too old for that, for that saying, Rick. Anyway, it's smart and well crafted and it offers something exciting for long time readers. And it's also the perfect jumping on point to the character and his mythology. It's a very promising start that I can't wait to buy along with whatever variant they drop. Totally agree, Rick. Um, as mentioned again, uh, we've, we've mentioned it before and on the previous episode, Jed has done a, a wonderful job in balancing um, a great issue for newcomers, uh, but also there's just so much. Like, there's so much for seasoned fans. It's it's just so great to read and to kind of get giddy over. So um, totally agree with you, Rick. And yeah, variants, you know, please... As long as they're not like forty plus, you know, I'll grab, I'll grab a handful of them. I don't know if I'll get forty of them, um, but they certainly do showcase lovely artwork. So uh, you got to appreciate that. But thank you so much, Rick. Right. Well, uh, we've only got a couple of other bits of feedback now, and I am going to play them for you. And uh, these come from a couple of other probably familiar voices uh, you would have heard. Uh, the first one. I've got from Jack Russell. Give me a keg of beer. Moran. Um, he's the host of Tomes of Evil. He's currently doing a Moon Knight Villain Mania month. Uh, more on that later. And uh, anyway, here's Russell's thoughts on, um, yeah, on issue one. Hello, uh, Into the Night listeners and High Priest. This is Russell, and I am so proud to finally give my feedback on Moon Knight. Number one was everything that I wanted and more. The art is absolutely fantastic. The action scenes, amazing. They harken back to the uh, the Ellis run. Um, really awesome. 
I loved how it was written. I loved Moon Knight's voice. Um, he's not... Um, He's, he's dealing with his DID. Um, he is in therapy, and he's kind of gotten a hold on this on his DID, which his therapist says that they can treat that now, which is, it brings a new dynamic to the character. We got a new supporting cast. I'm sure eventually we'll see the classic supporting cast, but something fresh and something new is always cool. Um... Yeah, I just, I love the idea of the Midnight Mission and Moon Knight, you know, protecting the denizens of the night. It's just, it's absolutely brilliant. I cannot wait for another one. Ugh, it's going to be such a long wait. Another month. Um... I've already bought two copies of this one, a digital and a print one. Oh man, yeah. Um, I, I think Jed and Capuccio just knocked it out of the park. I, I have so. It's just I, I'm stuttering here because I don't know what to say. It's just so good. I can't wait. I was more invested in this immediately than I was Max Bemis's run from the start. Um. I'm so glad we're back at street level, but with a tinge of the supernatural, it's exactly what I wanted. It was uh, so cool seeing Moon Knight not only fight vampires and arm wrestling with Frankenstein, but he was fighting vermins. Vermin makes an appearance in this, and he can clone himself. That was a nice surprise, but of course... The big surprise at the end. This is the first appearance of a brand new Moon Knight villain. This is Hunter's Moon. Oh my god. Great introduction for him. Hoping we have a very lengthy run. Because uh, I want to see where this... Uh, uh, Hunter's Moon arc goes. I'm super excited, so excited for a new villain. Um, hell yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, that's it for me and uh, High Priest. Uh, this is Russell signing off from Tomes of Evil. Thank you. Thank you so much, Russell, for those thoughts as well. Um, yeah, basically echoing a lot of our thoughts as well. So glad that you enjoyed it. Um, bringing Moon Knight back to the street level, I think, was a wise move. After, I mean, again, personal taste. Um, after that, that really over-the-top uh, cosmic adventure with with Conchu and the age of Conchu uh, with Jason Aaron, I think a lot of people were calling for Moon Knight to return to the street level uh, even back in the Bemis run, wanting to, uh, you know, look a little bit past uh, that focus on the DID and, and have him just beat up villains. Uh, we got that towards the end of the Bemis run as well, but we, we kind of wanted more, and this just delivers, doesn't it? So um, really, uh, really enjoyed it. Um, and, and, yeah, you, I think you uh, echo a lot of what uh, listeners want to hear as well or want to read Russell. Uh, also, as well, I know your love for Hunter's Moon. I mean, there's so little of him revealed, but to have him in issue one, to see the cover on issue three, I know you're chomping at the bits, Russell, to to learn more about this fella. And uh, and I don't know about you, yeah, that reveal of him being the left fist of Conchu, stroke of genius, loved it. Uh, so, yeah, really, really fun stuff. Um, yeah, so we also have... Uh, some feedback here finally from and i left this one because it's a longy uh we got from the drop king phil from capes and lunatics and capes and lunatics sidekicks uh so phil uh by the time you hear this uh they would have dropped a review themselves of of moon knight in their show capes and lunatics so go check it out but i haven't listened to this so here is phil and let's hear what he has to say about issue one Hello, High Priest of Conchu, 
Ray and fellow loonies, this is Phil from the Capes and Lunatics and the Capes and Lunatics Sidekicks podcast. And the day is finally here. Moon Knight number one. We have a new edition. And I'm loving this book. Uh, I, I I saw some criticisms and it's like they complete. I think they're completely unfounded. Uh, right from the first page, that art draws you in. I think this book has the right mix of like lights and darks in the art. I, it's it says it speaks to me. Of, it takes some of the better pieces of it, like the better components of art we've gotten in previous runs, but still does something new art wise and again it's very striking visually I mean just the parts between Moon Knight gliding down and through the windshield of the van again him swooping down and taking out well they're vampires here but taking out people in a vehicle again a very evocative of like issue one of Houston's run, I'm. I think Jed McKay does a great job here of d- writing his own thing and still honoring what has come before. Even if it's just this, the little things or just the big plot points about the personalities, he gives us. I guess a retelling of the origin, but again, just with Moon Knight and therapy, it's. It seems organic to retell the origin and not, you know, tacked on and be like, oh, hey, this is the the newest issue one. Maybe if you're jumping on the Moon Knight for the first time, you need a retelling of the origin. It doesn't seem like that at all. And I so appreciate that. As someone who's read every iteration of Moon Knight. Uh, then we have... Again, so much action... Of course, I mean, Jen McKay, I love his current stuff. Uh, Black Cat, uh, love this guy. And again, ooh, Vermin. Get the Vermin stuff. Again, is that, is, I don't think Moon Knight, Vermin's not like his regular thing, but is that even calling out just the short little run that uh, J.M.D. Mateus did on uh, Mark Spector Moon Knight? The few that I don't know, maybe. But again, McKay is like the master of you know knowing where a character comes from and then but weaving something new. This might be my favorite page here, is with Moon Knight gliding over the city and the cape looks like the crescent moon. As he's swooping down, and of course. Who else? Who else would be on drugs? Who else would be looking for drugs? And someone who's wearing a giant eight ball costume, of course. Uh, and we think we get a new uh, supporting character here, Doctor Batter. Uh, well, of course, um, Andrea Steinman. I would assume it's gonna be a new supporting character but I like that she's been around before and again we get the stuff with the personalities but again maybe we're kind of moving not moving past them but taking it to the next level not letting it bog the entire story down you know honoring the past but also keeping in mind this is a new series and hey Moon Knight's about to enter a new platform uh, at Disney Plus show, so, you know, we need to kind of evolve the character for the times, too, I guess. And hey, are we thinking a uh, new arch nemesis here, Hunter Moon? (laughs) Or Hunter's Moon? Um, Again, another stab at an arch nemesis. I mean, besides Bushman, do we really have an arch nemesis? Um... But yeah, I mean, I think Hunter Moon may be a better... I had no problem with Sun King, but I think Hunter or Hunter's Moon 
might be an even better fit. Um, you know, a light side and the dark side of the moon. Um, and I love how Mark is ready to move past Conchu. You no, know, kind of honoring who and what Conchu was to him, but also being like, yes, I understand that this what this entity's done and it has to pay for its crimes. But yes, yeah, sorry if I've been rambling on too long, but like I said, I love this issue. The art, again, a mix of, you know, what's come and a mix of the new and just Jed McKay. Kind of the same with the story, you know, honoring what's come, be what's come before, but also making it his own and, you know, stepping things up and mixing it up in new ways. Uh... But yeah, I think, you know, we've all been excited for New Moon Knight number one, and the excitement was, uh, you know, we've been proven right. I give this book an A. Um, I can't wait to see what comes next, and I hope it's going to be a hard wait every month for uh, each issue, and I cannot wait to hear how Ray, the joy and enthusiasm in Ray's uh, uh, voice with this issue. So, like I said, big A for me, and... Hopefully, I can keep sending in feedback every issue. All right. Until next time, my fellow travelers of the night. Mekong. Well. Hey, Ray, we might have to look into that uh, closing there. Mekong, you watch over the denizens of the night? Because, I don't know, he's been a bad boy lately. How about, should we change this to May Moon Knight? Watch over the travelers of the night? I don't know, just something to think about. See you later. Yes, thank you so much, Phil. Uh, you do have a point there. <laughs> Conchu's been a bad boy. Mate, Conchu, watch out. Look, I don't want to anger the god, so, um, you know, just got to just gotta keep him happy. Not to say that I'm on the left fist side. Uh, but, yeah, interesting as well. Um, I like your point about uh, another stab at a main villain. Yeah, Bushman, uh, rightly so. Yeah, Sun King was, like, like a, a polar opposite to Moon Knight as well. Now we get Hunter's Moon, uh, which is the left fist to to uh, Mark Spector's right fist. So interesting dynamics. Um, I think it's it's uh, very cool to see. Um, and as you mentioned as well, I mean, all the other things that you said, uh, honouring the past as well. Uh, there's a retelling of the origin. I don't think a retelling. It was just a, it was literally like just a few word balloons and a page of Mark uh, stooped uh, at the foot of the, the Conchu statue. So it was just like a real kind of like nod and a quick, hopefully quick enough for, for any new readers. Um, uh, and incidentally as well, though, like if you, there, there are many variations of Mark when he does reach that temple. Temple, Like I think the Mench run shows uh, some Cult of Conchu followers. They actually drag his body uh, they wrap it up and they put it at the feet of that statue. Marlene discovers it. This iteration is more of the modern run. Uh, it was one of those, uh, there was a digital release, I think, uh, that kind of captures Moon Knight's origin, like a whole heap of characters. And one of the different iterations is showing Mark with, with the gun in hand, um, stumbling into the temple and dying. Uh, at the feet of Conchu. So, yeah, slight variations there, but uh, yeah, you're right. I mean, Phil, it's a, a little quick nod to the origin there. Uh, yeah, light and dark, there's a lot of these kind of contrasts happening. Uh, interesting that you mentioned the criticisms. I, I haven't come across any yet, but... I haven't, it's not like I've been looking for them too. Uh, I've just glanced uh, uh, upon a few reactions on Twitter, and they all seem to be quite positive. So I'm glad... Well, you know, it's understandable that there would be different views, uh, but I'm just curious as to what. It, it may be, you know, the absence of his support network in Marlene and Frenchie. Again, that's something that Rebecca and I had addressed in our previous episode. And an A, Phil. I mean, that's awesome. I gave it a nine and a half, you know. Um, a lot of that is uh, for tech technicals but also a lot of it is from fandom <laughs> so uh, i'm unabashedly you know gonna mark with my heart as well uh you know because if i like it i like it and i'm not gonna try and judge it as a robot um i'll judge it as as myself so nine and a half and and i'm glad to see that you did uh, potentially the same as well phil with by giving it an a 
Anyway, listeners, uh, that about wraps it for this quick fire feedback episode. I'm going to drop this uh, soon ish, so you'll have it to complement uh, the reaction episode, which came out just a couple of days before. Uh, before I go, though, just some spectacles, as I mentioned. Uh, Tomes of Evil have a Moon Knight Villa Mania month, so you'll hear Russell and his special guests. All of them familiar voices if you do listen to Into the Night, this podcast. Uh, the likes of Chad, Rebecca, and, uh, and Chase, uh, who runs a Moon Knight fan page, uh, website is really good. Uh, so go check it out. Um, you know, I'll get in there at some point to, uh, get to talk about, uh, t- get to talk about one of Moon Knight's other, mo- uh, villains. So very excited. Um, always excited to talk about Moon Knight stuff. Uh, go check it out. The links in the show notes for that. Also, Daniel, Daniel Doings, he's got a GoFundMe for his Fringe Night issue six. I urge you to consider it. Have a look at the webpage as well as his Patreon page. Uh, we've got links to that as well, uh, in our show notes for Fringe Night. Just check it out in one of those links. Also as well, Paul Davidson, a Moon Knight alumni, he's got a Kickstarter for his art book. Um, just, you know, showcasing some phenomenal artwork from him it's called fantastic illustrated again you can just click the link uh, check it out um I've, I've got my copy waiting hopefully i've pledged uh, it just looks fantastic uh also as well a moon knight origins uh there's an indiegogo page if you want to support their fan film uh that's coming out sometime in august i think or maybe september hope hopefully we'll get these guys on the show um to, to, get, to chat about it the director and the actor um, in the role of Mark Spector. Uh, that should be fun. Uh, they've also got Instagram and a, and a Facebook page. You can go check them out. Uh, and finally, as well, Phases of the Moon Knight, Essays Examining the World of Moon Knight. Uh, this is a fun and a big opportunity for all Moon Knight fans. If you want to write about your favourite character, Moon Knight, and get it published, go email Scott Weatherly at 20thCenturyGeek at gmail.com. Um, some further details in the show notes of what you need to provide. But Scott, uh, a friend of the show, a big Moon Knight fan and a host of 20th Century Geek, uh, he's got this proposal coming. Uh, paid gig, you know, but, you know, if you if you ask me, if you do it, as long as you get a, a copy of the book when published, which is also on offer, yeah, that's payment enough. But, uh, yeah, go check it all out. I uh, love sharing these Moon Knight-related things. Uh, next phase is a last quarter moon, so it's Over the Moon Arc Review. And I'll be joined by top tier Petruni Daniel Doing. And he and I will be uh, chatting about doing a bit of a spotlight on Werewolf by Night in our idle chat before going into, uh, in our second episode later on that week, uh, we'll be looking at an arc, Moon Knight Volume 1, issues 29 to 30, features Moon Knight and Werewolf by Night as well uh, in the Mensch run. Uh, They hadn't been together since the Werewolf by Night 32, 33, Uh, So it will be interesting to see how they go in that little two-parter. And as mentioned at the top of the show, if you check out patreon.com slash itkmoonnight, please check out our Patreon page, uh, see if any bonus incentives uh, pique your interest, uh, and, uh, yeah, help help support the show. Uh, Really love to to get your thoughts anyway, Um, and, yeah, just love hearing from you too. Uh, Also as well, Hello Headphones, if you use the code ITK Moon Knight, you'll get 10% off their online store. And Dreamland Comics, our other sponsor, if you use, use the code Moon, you'll get 20% off their, their store. Uh, we're affiliate members of Entertainment Earth, so any of your action figure needs, click the links in our show notes, and that will help us prop up the show too with a little bit of a, uh, a kickback or whatever you call it. And finally, uh, we are part of the collective, um, just a whole group. Just check out the directory. Some great podcasts out there, all character based, geek culture based, comic book based. Um, they're fun. Uh, the likes of uh, Resurrections, the Thanos and Adam Warlock podcast. We also have uh, TV podcast industries. Those guys doing great work on the TV shows, all comic book related. And uh, and Happiness in Darkness, the superhero movie podcast with DJ Nick. Um, I love jumping on there, um, and it's a lot of fun to do definitely worth checking out incidentally i um i do a uh i jump on there i've jumped on there most recently to talk about aliens one of my favorite films i'm sure a lot of you i'm assuming would love it because it's such a classic anyway you can email us at itkmoonnight at gmail.com we're also on facebook twitter instagram youtube discord get vocal 
uh, and Podchaser. We have a website too as well. And incidentally, with Podchaser and Apple Podcasts, if you want to leave a review, five stars preferably, then that would help us a lot. It will just um, get us out there a bit more to, uh, to other potential loonies out there. So anyway, loonies, that is it. Thank you so much. It's been such a fun week with this new issue one. I always love making it kind of like a little bit of a special occasion. Um, Thank you so much for your feedback. Thank you so much for your thoughts. And as always, oh, as always, may Mr. Knight watch over the denizens of the night. Catch you later. and affiliated characters, stories and events are properties of Marvel Characters Incorporated. Materials used and discussed within the podcast are intended for critique and review purposes only under the fair dealing concept of the current Copyright Act. The views, information or opinions expressed during the podcast are solely those of the individuals involved and do not necessarily represent those of the copyright owners.